Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of 8-Bit Millie. It's been a while, months, many months since I've last done a video. Many reasons for not doing it, but the short answer is I was just busy. There's some sub answers too. Um, I was very unhappy with my camera setup I had. I had an HD, Logitech HD or whatever it is it's sitting over there. Logitech HD webcam 1080p. Beautiful, really works beautiful. Plugged into Windows 10, <laughs> sucked. Plugged into my Linux, didn't suck as bad. But it was always ending up with the sound being out of sync. And then me and then in edit, I'd have to reorganize and line up the sound and I just never happy with it. Then I had another camera, Nikon, which did really good bench shots, but it didn't do 1080p, it did 720. And it only had like a 20 minute battery life and I had kept swapping batteries out. And it only, I don't know why, it only recorded on one side, not stereo. So I'd have to always merge the sound in in Audacity, then try to line the sound back up with the talking, and yeah, so that kind of sucked. Um, I bought an HD webcam. This is back when I was in the other building, and it sucked. It, it worked. You know, I had beautiful bells and whistles, little turning screen, and remote control, all that good stuff worked really good, yeah. But the quality was always washed out. No matter how much I changed it, the quality was washed out. There was jittering in it. And the sound sucked. So every time I videotaped it, or any time videotaped it, that, that dates me. Anytime I did any recordings, I would basically use my, um, you know, the little Nikon camera. Sorry, I got a cold, so if I sound a little weird. The little Nikon camera for my audio, because the other cameras I used, none of the audio matched up correctly. It wouldn't, um, one it would sound okay and the other sound bad. And the whole time I'm doing that, the best camera I had was my iPhone. But I didn't use my iPhone because you can never get anything off of it. You try to install iTunes and have it work, and it's like, oh, God dang. Anywho, I had another iPhone sitting here, another iPhone that it was my wife's, and then I bought her a new one. And I know I'm rambling, but it's been a while, so you got to get caught up. Um, so I took this iPhone, and I've been using it just sporadically, sporadically. That's a good word, sporadically. What's her name? Uh, phew, what, I can't remember her name. <sighs> no, I'm, I'm not. Clueless, the one girl, sporadically. I thought it was cute. Anywho, <laughs> the iPhone. I finally decided, you know, I have an internal server in here in my office that I'm using for writing code for one of my other paying clients. Um, can I install FTP on this iPhone and that way I can upload the videos because it seems like if you made your video more than four gigabyte it ain't coming off the iPhone no matter how hard you try which is dumb maybe it would work if I had a Mac but guess who ain't buying a Mac yeah me so anyways I tried that and that works so this is a test run and the nice thing is is now the iPhone it includes the screen so I can see what I look like and yeah, I'm not impressed but <laughs> I can see what I look like now, whereas before, either I was talking in the blind and had no clue if I was even centered, let alone if I look like excrement. But if I didn't do that, I'd have a video, I'd have a, maybe a monitor, well, actually it's just a BGA screen because I was using a computer to capture it. And yeah, that didn't do work too well either. But this works so far. So, where have we been? What have we been doing? Well, I'm, I'm still in my office here in North Lima. Um, I had shows. I had two shows this summer so far. We went to two trade shows. We had Korg's in Columbus, which was a rousing success, and a brand new facility, so it was nice. Air conditioning, nice. Internet, double nice. Was able to take credit cards. So, it really worked out good. Then I had, I always say it wrong, I think it's CCAG or CGAC, whatever it's. Um, it's not game Cleveland, but the other one in Cleveland, um, it's in a sports complex. It's in a soccer complex and it was cold because the air conditioning is up so high. But then towards the end of the day, it's hot because the air conditioning either got overpowered or gave up. But again, did very well. I posted some pictures on book face of it and yeah, again, internet credit cards worked out nice i have coming up or we have coming up in two weeks or thereabouts on the 20 on the 30th and the first we have pgx Pittsburgh gaming expo and this is going to be a different thing for us 
Whereas before I had a table and I was trying to sell games, this time I got a big booth. I got a big booth, 12 by 13 or something like that, really big booth. And we're in the game developer section, excuse me. You don't, don't drink soda when you're on the camera, Millie. But um, we're in the game developer section and though we will have games for sale, we are not focusing on sales as much. Oh, I love sales. I want some money. You guys want to come buy the game? That's great. I'm not focusing on sales at this game as much as focusing on brand awareness and trying to promote 8-Bit Millie games. We have a number of things happening right now. We have a call for coders. What's that mean? Have you ever written for a game for, ever written or want to write a game for ClickVision, Atari 26, or I had somebody ask about the Commodore 64. I want to do Commodore 64 games. I have a Commodore 64 game here that I got at the last show I was at. And I spoke with the author of it, and I have to take my Commodore 128, which is on the floor back there, and pull the keyboard apart and clean it so all the keys work again so I can test it because I really like it. Um, but we're looking for Commodore 64 coders, um, Atari 2600, obviously, ColecoVision most definitely, obviously. Um, I'd like some Intellivision coders, and I'd love some Odyssey 2 coders. We sold some Intellivision games since the last time I did a video. We had, we had, were reselling for Electronite games, or Electrolyte, I think it's Electronite. Uh, we did some reselling for that. Those went pretty well, though, because we were doing reselling, there really wasn't any meat on the bone left for Millie. So they worked out well. Um, Odyssey 2, um, we became the exclusive distributor for um, Odyssey Brazil, and we did their first game, um, Tunnels of Terror, which is basically Turmoil 2022, but on the Odyssey. And I sold all of them, but the big butt there with the cost of wholesale and the shipping there was nothing left on it for us so it was more of a test run and though we didn't lose any money i don't think we made anything so i'd prefer to on the next time i do games outside of uh what we normally do like we're doing right now with the atari 2600 i have two atari or we have two atari 2600 games on online right now dragon chalice which is an awesome game it's like adventure but better and we have Siplex 2384 which is i'm gonna be honest with you a very 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 hard game to play i've gotten past screen one once so if you like a challenge that's the game for you if you want to just sit down and push a button and veg, <laughs> no. <laughs> but we are looking for Atari 2600 coders. We're looking for television coders. We're looking for Odyssey 2 coders. Obviously, we're looking for ColecoVision coders. And straight up, I mean, I've told people when they ask me, but here, here, here is our terms that we have at 8 Bit Melee Games, and it seems to work out pretty good, too. We give 25% of sale. If you write a game and I sell it for $50, you make $12.50. It may not be much, but that's all you had to do is write the game. We make the ROM, we make the PCBs, we make the cartridges, we make the box, we make the manual, we do the packaging, we do the shipping, we do the sales. You just get a check. Once a month, we send you a check. So, just just, just for gets and shiggles. I mean, and we, we sell the Atari games for less. We sell the Atari games for 40 because there doesn't seem to be as big a demand for Atari games. There. Maybe that will change with VCS. Who knows? No clue. Um, I do have some ideas on why certain consoles can't sell games that good and other consoles can't. But I'll keep that to myself until later on when I talk about them again. But, as I was saying, so let's say, for instance, Atari games are 40 bucks a piece. We're selling at $40 a piece. So you make $10 per game. Uh, we sell 100 games. You make $1,000. We, we sell 500 games. You make $5,000. And what did you do? You spent some time. You used Atari. Work on it. I have an Atari game that we are we need to work on. We need to get written. And now I'm hoping my coder would do it. But if not, maybe somebody else will because we have another game coming out for the Clico. I won't tell you what it is. I have a mis problem of telling. I have actually two games for coming out of ColecoVision. Another one that's coming out by November 1st, and I will insert the little tease right now. There you go. That was the tease. <laughs> um, and then we have another game we want to come out on December 1st. That one is going to be a little bit more difficult. Ooh. 
getting it out at that time, I had to talk to a hardware guy because it requires additional hardware. Yeah, I'm sorry, you better buy some. <laughs> so that's that's what we're working on right now. And then I got other things that are going on too. Um, like I said, this show that's coming up, I've been really busy getting stuff together, building a new display boot table and booths and lights and chotskis and all the other stuff and putting together candy. And I'll just show candy right here. Yeah, I'm getting candy ready, my new employee. So that's basically where we've been the past few months. I'm, more stuff has happened, but that's it. Oh, wait, 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 all things ColecoVision. That did not die. All things ColecoVision is brewing, it's going. All things ColecoVision, all things ColecoVision has its own forum. If you ever go to the allthingscolecovision.com homepage, you will see that there's some links that they don't do anything yet for downloads and libraries and such. They will soon. And we are putting together a newsletter. And this is not going to be like an online digital PDF download and get it. This is going to be one of those old school newsletters. Five, ten pages, eight and a half by eleven paper, printed both sides, folded in half, staple, staple, mailed to you. Yeah. Old school, 40-year-old stuff. None of this new stuff. None of this new PDF stuff and digital and look at my phone. No, you're going to have to go get the mail out the mailbox. You're going to get some snail mail. Anyways, that's going to be the newsletter. And we will hopefully be... Take a subscription soon. We have a call for articles for that, too. Um, I'll put a link, maybe. Or somewhere. I don't know where. I, anyways, there's a call for articles. You go go on to the um, allthingscolecovision.com. Click on the forum link. Go in there, and you'll see a call for coders and a call for articles in the various form and forums, and you'll get more details on it. But we'll look for people who may want to write articles for the ColecoVision. This is specifically ColecoVision for the newsletter. ColecoVision and Cleco Adam. But that's it. So as I'm editing the video, I realized that the next little segment that I had in here, well, little, like eight minutes long, me talking about my thoughts on Atari age, I decided, nah, I'm going to keep them to myself. So instead what I did is I went on to an AI that I used, copy.ai, and I asked that AI, the cons of Atari purchasing Atari age. Just for shits and giggles. And this is what it said. While the acquisition of Atari Age by Atari brings several exciting prospects, it's also essential to consider potential disadvantages or concerns that users and the community might have. Loss of independence. Atari Age has thrived as an independent online community, fostering a unique sense of camaraderie among Atari enthusiasts. Some users might worry that Atari's ownership could compromise the independent spirit and grassroots nature of Atari Age. Changes in community dynamics. With Atari now at the helm, there is a possibility of alterations to the user experience and community dynamics. Users might be concerned that new policies or rules implemented by Atari could impact the open and welcoming atmosphere that has been a hallmark of Atari Age. Convergence of interests. Atari Age has always embraced and supported the broader Atari community, which includes enthusiasts, developers, and collectors. However, some users might question whether Atari's acquisition could potentially prioritize commercial or corporate interests over the grassroots community that Atari Age has fostered. Loss of focus. Atari Age has been a dedicated platform catering specifically to Atari fans, providing a centralized space for Atari-related discussions and content. As Atari broadens its gaming portfolio and ventures into new territories, users might fear that the focus of Atari Age could shift away from the Atari community and dilute the platform's purpose. Impact on community moderation. The acquisition could bring changes to the moderation and management of the community. Users might be concerned about how Atari's involvement could affect the hands-on approach to community moderation that Atari Age has maintained. It's important for Atari to address these concerns transparently and ensure that the acquisition respects and maintains the core values of Atari Age. Open communication between Atari, Atari Age, and the community will be crucial in navigating these potential challenges and maintaining a vibrant and inclusive environment for Atari enthusiasts. So what did I just cover there? Where have I been? Went down to Atari Age and... Oh, I talked about the PGX coming up. And after that's Torgs in Columbus. Torgs is going to be fun. Um, I would want to talk about the games, but I have a nasty habit of discussing games that are in 
progress and then deciding I don't want to do them. That's dumb, but I am that way. So I don't discuss them no more. So anyways, it's been a while. I missed all you guys. And I'll be making more videos. I'll try to get back to a weekly thing. We'll see how this one works when I upload it. Have a great day.